Hey, good morning, YouTubers, Facebookers. This is Clay with the Clayway and Clay's AC and Auto Repair here in Grand Rapids, Michigan. If you find this video helpful, please do me a favor. I'm trying to help you out. Subscribe to my page, click the notifications. Um, this is going to be a pretty straightforward video. It may take a couple minutes to show you, but I generally get right to the point. But I'm still building my page, so subscriptions are important. And, you know, I am doing this for free for you guys. So remember, if anybody else can do it, you can do it too. I'm going to show you how to change the driver's side window regulator on this 2009 Chevy Silverado 4x4 extended cab, but it's probably going to be about the same for your quad cab and your regular cab. And I'm also going to post it underneath uh, GMC Sierras as well because it's going to be identical to that. So we're going to get started. If you've got a question for me, hit me up on Clay's AC and Auto Repair under the Facebook and I'll try to help your automotive related needs. Okay, so this procedure is going to be the same for the driver's and the passenger side door. First thing we're going to do is we're going to take a little screwdriver and we're going to pop that clip right off of there. And then that should expose two 10 millimeter bolts. Problem is, in this particular truck, somebody's already taken them out. So I'm going to have to go find some. But I'm pretty certain that they're 10 millimeters and that one's most definitely a 10 millimeter. To remove this particular bolt in the door handle, you're going to raise the door handle and remove it. I'm going to use an electric impact to take that out. And I just want to point out that every door that I've ever worked on almost always has two bolts of fixing the door. Sometimes they're back here, sometimes they're up here. I think that's good information for the future. Some doors come up like this and come off. A lot of Fords do that. Uh, Chevrolet uses push clips. So you're going to take a body tool and you're going to pull it away and you should be able to remove the door rather successfully and easily. So to remove the door easily, we're going to go ahead and just pull it back and you can get your, once you've got it removed a little bit either with the body tool or whatever, you can get your hand back here and you can pull these little clips and you want to work your way around the door just gently pulling it because if there's something else of fixing it say like this cover has to come off that I I think it does um, then you'll know that there's something there you don't want to it should just stuff should just pop off and that one flew that way but underneath here we expose another 10 millimeter bolt that I didn't know was there so we're gonna go ahead and remove that but that tells me that it's a fix somewhere. And then there's also one right here underneath the, underneath the handle. And I might have to get an extension to do that. So these are the two bolts that I was talking about, 10 millimeter bolts. So once you have the two 10 millimeter bolts removed from there, you should be able to pull the whole arm right off. And also the top triangle is separate from it. So you're just gonna take a screwdriver or your body tool and pull it off and somebody's already broken the tab off of this one so there should be three but there's two it'll hold on there good enough so once you've removed the door having it on there we're going to have to unplug the electrical connectors and how you're going to get to them is when you pull the door panel back you can push up on the rear and you'll snap that out of there unless this that's not the way it's supposed to be but it is and then you'll be able to unplug all the electrical connectors or you can just quite simply slide the the switch through the opening in the door I'm probably going to unplug them just because I'm not sure if that's going to work, but I was trying to explain it on the video. To get this electrical connector off, that pries up, and then you're able to remove that. This one pushes down, and then you're able to remove that. Now we can successfully remove the window trim panel. Now, because I'm believing that the window regulator is bad, we're going to go ahead and plug the window switch back in, turn our key on, work our window up and down, and see what's happening. So if you're watching for the door panel segment, that segment's pretty much concluded. Um, the only other thing that you would have to do to take the door panel off is remove the screws that hold your handle on. And they're back here and I believe they were eight millimeter. I'm not taking the actual door panel off completely off because we're just doing a window regulator. So now we've turned the key on and we've checked our regulator and it seems seized. More than likely we're gonna find, and I'm gonna go ahead and remove this. We're gonna find that these cables are busted. So it's gonna need a new regulator and I'll show you what screws to take out and how to get it out and so forth and so on. So first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna remove three 10 millimeter screws. And I think there's supposed to be one here that's obviously missing. Somebody, some kind of hack's been in here and worked on it right there. And then that bracket will come off and that's the bracket that holds the door on. So to remove the bracket, lift up on the bracket and turn it and then you'll be able to pull it away. Next thing we're gonna do is we're gonna remove six 10 millimeter screws. 
and there's a couple little nuts right there. Two there, one, two, then another one there, and then one underneath that switch right there. Now we're gonna go ahead and remove the connector that connects the window motor regulator wiring harness. Okay, so during the reinstallation process, you're gonna just leave these bolts, these two screws right here loose. That allows you to set the window inside there. Now, depending on where your window is down at, you're probably gonna end up getting a short gear wrench, or you may even be able to get a 10 millimeter in here. We're gonna have to remove the two bracket nuts. I'm sorry that it's trying to get a good angle on it for you. You can see it way down there in the end right behind the ra the rail right there so we're gonna have to remove that camera focus a little bit so we're gonna remove that one there and we're also going to do that and that'll allow us to lift the window out of the tracking system and then the tracking system will collapse in on itself so we can remove it just so you guys know once you can get your window motor to work you can move it up to where the bolts are in these eye holes so it'll be easier for removal or installation. If the cables are broken, then you can move them up to there and remove them. I didn't know that because it was stuck down when I started doing it, so I couldn't move it up. All right, so once you get your bolts loose, you can raise your window up. And then me, I've got a nylon thing that I can use. I always push pressure against the glass while I'm trying to hold it. And then I can put this wedge up in here somewhere. I might have to actually do it off camera because I might need four hands to do it. I'm not sure, but we'll try. All we want to do is wedge it in there just so the window will stay up. Okay, now that you've got your window up and secured, you can actually remove your window motor regulator. And how I'm going to remove mine is just the way I'm doing it. And we're going to reinstall it the same way as well out like that okay with your window regulator removed generally you can see that these cables are broken or bound I would assume that this particular one the cabling separated inside the motor track and that's why it went bad but that's a really common problem with these I'm going to show you just me reinstalling this and show you how you get it in there and then I think the rest of it you can pretty much handle so the part number for this particular vehicle is a Dorman 741443. That's for the passenger side extended cab Chevy Silverado or GMC Sierra. Okay, something just funny just happened that it wasn't on camera. I was looking at this and I'm like, that bracket's at the top and this bracket's at the bottom. Well, it needs to be flipped around. Okay, so in all seriousness, we need to make sure that these screws are in there and they're not tight, but they're sticking out so we can slide it in. We also need to make sure that these screws are loose so these brackets will slip down in there and then we're able to tighten them up. And sometimes when they come out of the box, they're not that way. So we're gonna start by installing this in the bottom first and then we'll install this. I'll show you. So what we'll do is we'll slide it in there like this and then we'll bring that back up and then we'll be able to slide this portion inside here. and then we'll be able to stand it up inside the door and then we'll be able to fit these screws maybe someday, someday right inside there and then lock it down and then we'll be able to push our nut right through over here and then we'll be so we push that right inside there sorry <laughs> looking at what I was doing push the nut through there, set the nut on there, and just leave everything loose until we get everything set in all of its pockets. And just something that I wanna point out, it wasn't a problem for me, but make sure you run your window up and down all the way to ensure that everything is working properly and nothing's bound up. You can get binds in your channels where it runs. Be really careful, They don't move them if you don't have to. Okay, another thing during reinstallation, make sure that all your clips are actually inside your door before you go to put them in. Make sure there's none stuck in the surrounding spots. If they are, take them out, put them in the door plastic, and you should be good. Now you can reassemble it. Okay, so with our new window motor installed, 
we can move the window up and it'll allow us easier access at the little 10 millimeter bolts. That pretty much concludes installing the window regulator on this, so you're just gonna put it back together. If this video was helpful, please subscribe, click the notification, share my videos, send me your nice comments, all that jazz. If you got a question for me, hit me up on Clay's AC and Auto Repair on the Facebook. God bless you guys. Remember, if anybody else can do it, you can do it too.